Lucknow, we would have had just like one, two or three pages about vegetarianism, where we were talk, taught about lacto-vegetarianism, lacto-ovo-vegetarianism, veganism, and that's it over. We had no clue about, you know, if a vegan came, what kind of diet shall she create? And then there was this client of mine who was sitting in front of me, and I, every year I always find these one or two clients who come, and they come and teach me a lesson. They give a knock on my head. You know, because, because of them, I would have gone back, thought about, reworked, unlearned, and come up with something new, and that would have clicked, and that would be the lesson for that year. So for the past five years, there are so many teachers who came as my clients and taught quite a lot. I'm just going to share a couple of them. I'll keep to the time, I promise. So should we be eating like our ancestors? I would say yes. Okay, eat what your ancestors ate. Are you a Tamil Brahmin? Please go back, sit with your Tata Party, find out what they ate, and please eat that. Don't sit and try to have chapatis, you know, for two, three meals, whole wheat bread. It's not going to work. Trust me, it's just not going to work. You know, the, I deal with uh, weight management, you know, people who come for weight loss all the time. I have people who are from the fashion industry, from the film industry, you know, they have to look good for the photo shoot and a whole lot of requirements. And then people who want six pack and, you know, they want to build their muscle, have bigger biceps and all these cosmetic goals. So whey protein, meal replacements, all these things. You know, this is how my practice has been. But then side by side, I also realized there are a whole lot of things which is linked to your ethnic origin. So if you are a Bengali, your rice and fish curry is what would suit your system. You know, okay, sorry to bring up non-veg, but what I'm trying to say is go by your ethnic origin. Kannadigas, I've seen a lot of jolag roti being eaten there, ragi mude being taken there, and that suits their system. Okay, so in fact, I had a client from Hubli who was eating quite a lot of wheat and oats, and then all that I asked him was what his parents gave him when he was a child. And I said, just go back to what they were doing. And within a month, he was absolutely fine. So one strong take-home message would be to stick to what your ancestors ate, and that is what is going to work. So see where you came from, which part of India are you from, which district are you from, and what is it that your ancestors ate. Next. Any, anybody here who has gluten intolerance? Even me. Anyone else? Anyone has lactose intolerance? Okay, I see three hands going up. Four hands going up. Yes. So a whole lot of symptoms. The first thing is definitely if you have bloating, we have a lot of abdominal pain, um, lots of flatulence, and then there are times when there is unexplainable anemia, and then in spite of eating right, your energy levels are like ground zero, you know? So if that's the case, and sometimes even foggy headedness. Uh, I didn't realize I had gluten intolerance. I kept going from one doctor to the other, and there was like three years, um, and then suddenly in one of the conferences, I was looking at the symptoms for celiac disease being displayed, and I realized, oh my God, I have this, 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 everything. Okay, that's me. And then I immediately went off, uh, you know, gluten, and that helped a lot. So it's the case, the same with human lactose. So slowly I realized milk is not the ultimate thing. You know, we were taught that you need to drink milk, start your day with milk, finish your day with milk, you know, have milkshakes, it's so good for you. And I'm like addicted to Thai sadam like anything. I'm like a drug addict. I need my Thai sadam, you know. I go through such phases, but thankfully I was actually telling my friend, I successfully, you know, stayed away from Thai sadam for a couple of months for now. And I'm sure I can sail through and shift towards that phase where I can be totally off curd in my diet. And I'm going through that phase now. I'm sure this, you know, I'm glad that I came for this conference because there's so many people who have shared their experiences. And I know this is the right way to be. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there is a big reason why all of us are here in this room. You know, I'm sure there are so many things that we could have done on a Sunday, but if we are all here, I'm sure it's because of a major reason, a major shift that's gonna happen to all of us. Next slide. Okay, so there's something called as leaky gut syndrome. Has anybody heard about it? This is something that you also get to see when, you know, your gut wall, um, your epithelial lining of your gastrointestinal system gets inflamed and the tight, tightly packed cells kind of get loose. So that happens with a lot of exposure to stress or could be self-medication, could be bacteria. 
could be even sugar alcohol, refined carbohydrates like your sugars, your cola drinks and all of that. And plus also gluten, lectin, lactose, acetylate, fructose and also food additives. Okay, so uh, the tightly packed cells of your epithelial lining can loosen up and undigested food particles could get inside and cause a lot of bloating and a lot of discomfort. Okay, so this is one thing to watch out for. Next. So this is just a picture of the intestinal lining where there is a gap between the junctions and a lot of toxins actually seep in. So it's very important uh, to see if you have any issues related to your gut because if you're trying to lose weight, build muscle, do whatever with your system, your engine has to be perfect. So just like how your vehicle's engine is important to function well, likewise your gastrointestinal system is very, very important. Okay, so don't put the wrong fuel into there. It's like petrol, car, or diesel, put in now. It'll all get clogged, right? So likewise, so make sure that you're putting the right fuel into your system. Next. Many a times as a sports nutritionist, I'm asked by a lot of people, you know, I'm a vegetarian, can I still be on a vegetarian diet and play well? Because I'm into competitive sports, okay? So uh, this is one challenge. So that's when the complementary proteins and pairing of proteins is very, very important because there are certain amino acids which are absent in grain and there are certain amino acids which are absent in pulses. So, but when you put these two together, then automatically you get complete protein, okay? So, if you were to eat idli with sambar or else, you know, wheat bread with a peanut butter, then obviously you're getting complete protein. So, it is possible to do it that way and we've really seen a whole lot of top athletes. In fact, have you heard of uh, Scott Jurek? He's an ultra marathon runner. So, he's a vegetarian. Martina Navratilova is a vegetarian. Carl Lewis and I think we have so many people who've been vegetarians and still play competitive sports. Yes? Okay, uh, I belong to the allopathic school, okay, where I've actually opened up my mind to naturopathy and all a whole lot of things. There are different schools of thought, okay. Uh, so see what works for you, that's what I would say, because uh, there is this food combination theory, Dr. Shelton and a whole lot of people have given, so fruits are best eaten alone, you know, so the, there are a whole lot of concepts, so it's a, it's a big, big thing, you know, if you start talking about food combination, it will go on for this entire day, um, I think I'll talk to you in private, okay, so let's go ahead. So these are the limiting amino acids. If you see the legumes and all of that, you know, tryptophan and methionine is missing there. But at the same time, if you look at grains, ly lysine, leucine, and threonine, these are like specific amino acids which are missing. But if you learn how to pair it, you're getting complete protein. Okay, uh, next. So how, this is putting it into practice. If you look at food combinations like this, you will actually get complete protein. So these are best examples of eating foods uh, so that you get complete proteins and most of it is something that you know we can easily make it at home you know kosamri is something that I, I'm sure most of us do eat at home and then the sprout chart with vegetables or else your chickpeas you eat your sundal with patani manga and all of that so you are getting complete proteins there may I have the next slide please some more examples uh, your poriurundes and then you know your dry fruit laddus um, Kadlama Urundai and then Porlanga Urundai, Ragi Ladu, all these. And I'm sure most of us these days do eat, you know, your millet dosas and all of that. So that also, you know, that's along with the chutney. In fact, Tenga chutney is extremely good. Uh, I come from Kerala, okay? And I was, uh, in colleges we were taught, oh, coconut oil is full of saturated fat, don't even look at it. Okay, you're going to die of, a, you know, a heart problem. And then over the years, you know, New York Times, in fact, over the past six, I think six years back, I saw this article which said, Coconut oil is amazing, it's got medium chain triglycerides and all of that. I was like, my ancestors knew all the time and I had a good laugh. Okay, and, and I'm glad these days every Hollywood actress is talking about coconut oil as this miracle oil which you can use it as a makeup remover, as a conditioner, and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And we need somebody from outside to come and tell us how good coconut oil is. Isn't that a good joke? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Next. So these are all the millets and these are absolutely gluten-free. 
You don't have to worry at all. There's no gluten in millet and this is easily available everywhere and it's so cheap you will actually support a lot of farmers. And I give this to all my clients in fact who want to lose weight. Okay, so I just say have kaikopillar if you have ragi, adai, have uh, pesaratu, have adai and giriyapums made out of any kind of millet. These days you walk into an organic health store and you find you know so many options. It's amazing, it's just booming. And then in fact all my direct shots always carry a list of organic stores across Chennai. If you want the database, I'll send it across to you. Probably I could send it to the organizer and then we could pass it out to all the uh, you know, uh, participants. So all my diet shirts go with the list of organic stores. I ask them where they reside and then try to locate stores and send that to them so that they can go and pick it up or else of course there are online sh shops as well. So that's great. So these are all the options that we have here. Next. So have a look at you know, the nutrients in them because many of us have been told that, you know, you need a whole lot of nutrients and even if you're not eating rice and wheat, you know, you do, you can literally live off, see, you've been eating lunch here with a whole lot of samai and syrup, you know, sinai and varag being served to you and, and it's quite nice. It's just that we weren't taught when we were babies as children that, you know, this, it's okay to actually have a kudravali rice or else a kanji or a pongal with it, right? And the nutrients, if you look at the calcium and all, look at Gair Varagaragi, which has like 344 milligrams of calcium. So you can go ahead and have that. It's okay if you don't drink milk. Okay, I don't know if you've read uh, Aval Vigden or Dr. Vigden. I've just recently written two articles to say it's okay not to drink milk. You know, you will get calcium from other sources. Last month, uh, these two magazines carried an article. Okay. So I think you can have a look at these millets and the nutrients and you still get a whole chunk of calcium and other nutrients and uh, you needn't worry about it if you're not drinking milk. Next. So the first thing, it's all written there. I'm just going to run through the slides because I know a whole lot of people are getting restless because it's already time and we have some more lectures to go. So ragi, the finger millet, uh, it's, it's really, really amazing, got plenty of nutrients. You can take pictures of the slide, a whole lot of nutrients listed out. It's the cheapest source, nobody even bothers to process it. It's too cheap, you know, so industries don't even look at it. This is good for us, great news, but so let's buy ragi, okay? So uh, this is uh, fantastic even for babies. Next. So these are all the things that we get to make with this. You get ragi semia these days, you just have to soak it in water for three minutes and then Use a muslin cloth and then put it in your idli cooker and then ragi semia is ready. Okay, or you make a ragi puttu out of it. So options are great. If you are a Kannadiga, I'm sure you would have heard of ragi mudde and all of that. We end up eating ragi kali, ragi kanji and all of that. So this is <coughs> awesome, great. Next. And then you have kambu. That is nothing but bajra in Hindi. So pearl millet. So a whole lot of nutrients, no gluten. It's great for bowel movements, so anyone who is constipated and all of that, if you start using millets, you will never have this trouble. Okay, so kambu is another awesome choice. Next. So you can do a whole lot of options with it. Go to YouTube, you will find plenty of videos, uh, you know, on recipes made with millet. Next. Sinai is another very good option. Uh, so instead of rice, you can actually have sinai. It's very easy to digest. Some might have trouble with other millets, but uh, sinai, ragi, kambu is like the easiest to digest. Okay, so make a slow transition. So probably if you're eating a lot of rice and wheat, slowly introduce it for one meal and then gradually make the transition because all of a sudden if you're going to shift to this, you might have some initial hitches and then you might just think, oh my God, this is not for me, this doesn't suit me and then you will give it up forever. So don't do that. Make small changes. You know, you start with the ragi kanji in the morning instead of your coffee. And then slowly, you know, for lunch, see if you could include something else, like say brown rice or something. And for dinner, it can be, you know, a ragi adai or a semia or any millet semia. Yeah. Next. It's great for diabetics too because it's got plenty of uh, complex carbohydrates and lots of fiber and micronutrients, especially chromium, which is very important for, you know, stabilizing your blood sugar levels. And uh, it's a slow digesting carb, so you won't have any trouble. So it's great for diabetics too. Next. Varagu, kodu millet again, it's very, very good. It's a good source of magnesium. So anyone who's got, uh, you know, migraine headache, you have terrible cramping during menstruation. Um, magnesium also has a big role to play in weight management. A lot of people don't get enough magnesium in their diets. 
And um, you know, there's a good book called The Magnesium Miracle by Carolyn D. D A N D. So uh, see if you can get your hands on it and see if you can read. And all these millets are a good source of magnesium. They're very, very good for health. So if you're struggling with weight loss, or if you have severe cramping and menstrual issues and headaches, you could be lacking in magnesium. So kindly consider that. Varaka has plenty of it. Next. Next. Kudravali. It's actually a rice. Yeah, you, you can make kanji out of it. The pongal may, uh, tastes really good. I mean, I've eaten kudravali pongal. Uh, so it's like, you can try all sorts of things. It's just that instead of rice, you start using these millets in your regular recipes. That is it. Next. Samai. Well, one thing about samai is, um, for someone who is pregnant, for the first trimester alone, please don't have it. Uh, this is one thing with that my mother told, you know, those days, you know, I know my mother was like the eighth child or something and, you know, they, they used to have 15 kids, 20 kids in, in that generation. My mom is like 65. Uh, so she used to say, you know, if they didn't want the baby, you know, if, if there was an unwanted pregnancy, they'll just make a sama kanji and then, you know, induce the abortion, right, induce miscarriages. So don't have it in the first trimester alone. Uh, this is one message that I wanted to con convey as well as Sama is considered. Next. Okay, besides the millets, the other traditional foods, just wanted to highlight, it will be nice, all my diet shots start with, you know, wake up in the morning, eat a handful of nuts, and then one ounce of Nelika juice. You'll get Nelika juice everywhere, and then you do get fresh Nelika wherever you go. So all that you need to do is take one ounce, which is 30 ml, mix it with a little bit of water, add some honey if you want. If you're a vegan, you can skip the honey. So just drink that. It's a great cleanser. It's got plenty of vitamin C. You'll end up absorbing a lot of iron throughout the day from all the foods that you eat. Okay? So it's a daily dose of antioxidants that you're getting. Nelika is cheap. It's available everywhere. Next. Parisadam. How many of you eat parisadam during summer? I love it too. Okay? This is very, very good. If you use manpatram or your terracotta pots to just cook the rice, soak it, and the next morning you have this, uh, add some shallots, and then, you know, if you could have this, this is like really good. It's a fantastic coolant for summer. It's got B12 also. So it's like really nice. Decomplex vitamins, and it's very soothing for your gut. So this is something, don't think that only construction workers and very poor people have. This is something which is very, very nutrient, nutrition. Next. Okay, uh, parpa body, yeah, parpa body, karavla body, tenga body, <laughs> all bodies, all chutney bodies, okay, they are great. So that first morsel that you have, make sure that you have these bodies, don't get, don't get worried about, oh, there's oil going there and all of that. If you're a vegan, skip the ghee and have nalanai, you know, that's your sesame oil, please go ahead and have it. So this is really good, and instead of the white rice, you can use the brown rice. Next. I have quick doubt. Does Sama improve the testosterone level? I don't know. I don't want to give you wrong information. If you want, I can check and get back to you. Okay. That's fine. Or does anyone have an information? He asked whether Sama helps in improving testosterone levels. Does anyone have an answer? You can check, so believe so, but not uh, sure. We have to check with the... Yeah, we don't have like evidence-based okay. uh, study. But uh, there are other ways to boost testosterone. Okay. Exercise, sleeping on time. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll talk to you in a little while. Okay, pickle. See, most of us think pickle oh, is so bad for health and all of that. Small amounts of pickle is good. See, when we have our LSA powder, we have a little of everything. You know, you don't try to eliminate. These days, people are so paranoid about calories and they're counting calories all the time. Even if you give us Swami Prasadim, they're like, Chakra Pongal, oh no, it's like calories. You know, it's like you're freaking all the time. This is the entire obsession with cal calories, counting calories, you've actually forgotten to sit back and enjoy food. You know, even to have one small katori of chakra pungal, you'll be like freaking, oh my god, I'll gain weight. You know, that's the, I have clients who step on the weighing scale or like they say a prayer before they step on the weighing scale. <laughs> I've even had a client who had tears rolling down her ears because she was so, so worried about what the weighing scale would show. Do you get it? The thing is, we are living in a society where you walk into a wedding or else a birthday party or any social do and they're like, oh, you seem to have lost weight, oh, you seem to have gained weight, and it's like you want to slap them. Isn't there any other topic to talk besides weight? Women, I'm sure you agree with me, don't you? Yeah, and all of us are dealing with issues. It could be that you're undergoing some treatment, you're going through some therapy, 
you're going through a bad phase in life, something could have happened. And why is this obsession with calorie counting and weight? I really don't know. I feel really sad for people. Um, you know, that's something that I'm, uh, you know, meeting people all the time in the clinic and feel sad sometimes. I'm glad that there is a right way of eating and you can still help them. So, you know, I see myself as a facilitator. Pickles, grapes. You know, all this uh, probiotic, prebiotic that we talk about, this is actually good, okay? It is good for your system, but in moderation, yeah? Next. Curry leaf powder, we were talking about chutney podi, so I just wanted to show for the benefit of delegates from abroad that these are things that go into making a powder. We mix this powder with a little bit of oil and then we consume this with rice. So this is how our chutney powders are made. So it's got a whole lot of spices and curry leaves are loaded with calcium and this is like really, really healthy and it's got lentils, it's got a little garlic, it's got a little, uh, you know, chilies and all of that in it. So, uh, this is really good. This is exclusively for the benefit of people who have come from outside. Next. How many love Okay. Okay, great. I love this. Okay. Why I want to tell you is in a, you know, we live a lifestyle where there's Lays, Kurkure dominating our lives. Okay. And we seem to have forgotten all this. In fact, I met a dentist the other day last month and then he said, if you actually eat patani, you know, those roasted peas that you get in the beach. So he said, if you were to eat that, because you're biting so hard and, you know, so it's good for your teeth. He said, even if you were to bite into a murukku, it's good for you. Once in a while, you need to have that. And he said, sugarcane is so good because as you're eating sugarcane, it also, you know, cleans your teeth. Simple. Okay, so pongal is coming. Get ready for that. Okay. Uh, yeah, so elurinda is something that I feel you should have stock of. And uh, kadlamutai also. So groundnuts and sesame seeds, we've been hearing lectures after lectures as to how loaded it is with calcium. And it has also got essential amino acids, you know. So this is a very good snack. Next. Okay, I've already mentioned this. Cooking oil, coconut would be a very good pick. Next. Sesame oil, next. And groundnut oil. You don't need refined oils. Okay, they add a whole lot of chemicals to it. I met a guy from Coimbatore who makes virgin coconut oil as well as refined sunflower oil. He said, I have to cater to both the people in the society. So I'm doing both, but I know for sure this is what is good. And I use only virgin coconut oil at home for cooking. Okay, so that's what he had to say. So he explained the complete process as to how refined oils are being made and all of that. So, so go ahead, get back to your basics. Next. It's good if you get cold pressed processed rice bran oil, it's good. It's got squalene and HDL and all of that. So it's Meaning it's, it's good to improve your good cholesterol. So rice bran oil is good. It's good. Or else what you can do is you can have bread rice or else have aval which is red in color which is your unpolished rice flakes. You can do that also. You're still getting the benefits of rice bran oil. Do you get it? Because it's unpolished, it's got bran in it. Yeah. Next. What is this? Ah, very good. Okay, perinda chutney is extremely good for digestion. So make sure that you have this once in a while. Okay, include your modaka kam kira, include agati kira once in a while. Agati, you're supposed to eat like twice a month, not to overdo it. Okay, so there are certain rules when it comes to all this. Next, this is the parent of the oil. Next, kolla. How many of you know horse grass? Yay, great. It's fantastic for weight loss. Uh, this is something that you should use now because uh, Chennai has winter only for two months, so you might as well make the most of it. So this is the best time, this month and the next month, to have lots of rasam or sundal or make a corn out of it, but make sure that you have horse gram. Next. And another thing which I wanted to emphasize was traditional cooking vessels. Please throw all your non-stick pans, okay? Get back to kalchatti, manchatti and all that, because there's plenty of studies which are emerging and they say how microwave ovens and non-stick pans and all of that can do a whole lot of harm. Okay, and even your melamine cookware, meaning, you know, serving plates and all of that. So, steel, get back to steel. We can afford go by silver plates. Otherwise, just stick to basic steel. Okay, or even your ceramic plates are fine. Next. 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 Are you getting enough sunlight? No. Try to get more. Next. <laughs> do you have Indian toilets at home? Next time you renovate? Or do some, you know, if you build a new house, make sure that you have Indian toilets. Makes a big difference. There's complete evacuation. 
Okay, so it's very, very important that you have Indian toilets at home. Okay, so that you squat. You go ask any fitness trainer. Okay, we have one sitting here, Usha. Okay, you ask any fitness trainer, they'll always say squatting is very, very good for health. Okay, so the benefits you can check out with her, but I think Indian toilets will do lots of wonders. Next. When was the last time you ate it together as a family? Are you busy watching TV and eating? Mindful eating is what I'm emphasizing through this slide. Okay, next. So the message is try to see if you can eat some real food, eat meals, wholesome foods, okay? And eat at the table, not in front of the television. And you don't have to answer the call. It's not that you're a surgeon and that your patient will just die if you don't pick that phone call or if you don't check how many likes you got on Facebook or you know who has posted a Twitter message or who has sent you a stupid joke on WhatsApp. Yeah? Please try to put the phone aside. Okay? So practice mindful eating. Keep your gut very healthy. Make sure that you poop every day. First thing in the morning without coffee, tea or any warm beverage, you should be running to the toilet to download. Okay? You're, you're horizontal, you wake up, vertical, because of gravity, should all come out, okay? So you should be running first thing to the toilet, not reaching out for a tea or coffee. So make sure your system is that good. Okay, so eat slowly, make sure that you are eating homemade meals, plant a garden and eat organic food. That's it. Last minute, last. <laughs> Mail me if you have any queries, that's my assistant's number. I don't take my phone most of the time. Okay, so I've given you my assistant's number. Is Thank you eating? so much. Is he eating?